A new report from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau out this morning finds that large banks are charging higher credit card rates than smaller banks and credit unions. According to an earlier report from the CFPB, credit card companies charged consumers $130 billion in interest and fees in 2022. Joining us right now is the CFPB director, Rohit Chopra. Uh, thank you for coming in, Rohit. Of course. Um, what happened? What did you find? Explain the numbers beneath it. Well, sure. This is a part of the story, I think, of the rate environment. But credit card debt now exceeds a trillion dollars. And people are paying much more. And rates that are significantly higher than the Fed hiked rates. And so what we're trying to do is figure out what's ways for consumers to switch refinance, get those lower rates, and we're finding many of them would be better off with newer entrants or smaller players in the market. Let me just play devil's advocate on this. Um, the idea of how big the fees are that are coming from the big banks, I would argue that that's probably because they have a much higher portion of the population than the smaller regional banks or the credit card union or the credit unions. And the other thing I don't know if this is true, but let me just throw it out there. Are they big banks charging higher rates because they're being more careful about who they extend money to at a point and making sure that they get rates that are reflective of the risk that they're taking? Well, we don't totally see that story play out in the data when we look at losses and other key statistics. But here's what's interesting. You're right. The credit card market is very, very concentrated. There's a few issuers that really control lots of it. And many consumers don't even know the ways that they can take their higher rate balance to a lower one. For the average household, let's say if they have $5,000, switching could actually save them hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the course of the year. And that adds up to billions. At the end of the day, we just want to see a vigorously competitive market. That's what I was going to say. That sounds like if it's an education issue, it, convincing people that they should move their funds. Well, I mean, because you want fair and free competition. If, if a bank's, another bank's going to give you or a credit union is going to give you a lower rate. Well, part of what we want it. to do is make sure there isn't hurdles to refinancing. We've seen some things that give us some pause, like the way they are doing credit reporting might make it harder for consumers to get offers. What do you mean? Uh, the way it used to be in credit reporting, uh, it would show whether you're carrying a balance or not. And often, people would get offers based on that. We also see that there's new ways in which you can refinance, but often it, there's some bureaucratic hurdles to that. So what we're doing... Bureaucratic hurdles from who? Like, who's putting up the hurdles? Oh, well, the process of moving your balance to another issuer often can lead to one big-time fee up front and sometimes credit checks and other hits. So we are proposing better ways to accelerate using technology and data to do more open banking, allow people to switch credit checks more good seamlessly. Credit checks are before you switch. Absolutely. No, no, no. Absolutely. We want the credit reporting to be accurate so that people are getting credit for when they are paying on time and able to translate well, that into I, lower but rates. But what's, what's the implication? That, that there's, there are errors that are happening? That the bank, big banks are intentionally not letting that well, happen? Or we, what's the... uh, several years ago, it was found that the credit card issuers changed the way they were credit reporting, and many people believe it was to mask who their most profitable customers were. You're right, though. We want consumers to know where else they can go. We're also trying to make it easier for banks who don't operate credit card programs to offer uh, debit-linked lines of credit using those same debit cards but be able to access credit and provide some competitive pressure on the big issuers. I mean, I'm just trying to think it through. We are more concerned about the regional and mid-sized banks right now than we've been in a long time because of the lot of, of the loans that they are carrying that don't make sense in this new environment where rates raised or were raised very rapidly. Um, you think commercial real estate and some of those things. Is there really that much cash available for consumers to refinance at a time when a lot of these banks have, have stopped lending because they're worried about being able to make um, the, the numbers that they need to do in terms of what they need yeah, to do? Yeah, well, well there, there's lots of different. When we say we're, you're worried about the regional banks, those are still pretty big ones, but there's lots of smaller and medium-sized ones that have not been impacted as much by some of the stress that you see in the headlines. And we're looking for a lot of them to try and be able to get more customers and use technology in ways that haven't been done before. Have those smaller banks complained about things? Have the credit unions complained? Yeah, we have heard that it can be tough for them to break in 
Um, there's a, all sorts of issues there, but really, if we do a more open ecosystem for people's financial data to be able to permission it electronically, get better underwriting, I think people could save lots of money. Hmm. Uh, what's the pushback you hear from the big banks when they talk about these things? Well, I think they want to just simply say, look, we're offering um, perks and other things. We want to make sure that if they are giving those rewards, they're actually giving them. There's not bait and switches about free airfares that don't come true. Um, but ultimately, I think they, too, will benefit from more players in the market. Um, where, where do you think the consumer stands right now? Because um, interest rates have come up, and that certainly creates a bigger problem with um, loans and the interest rates that they're paying on their credit cards and their yeah. auto loans and their mortgages. But the consumer still looks to be pretty strong by all the data that we have. Still measure. pretty strong. We are seeing, though, uh, the number uh, delinquencies have ticked up a little bit. We are seeing more consumers who are paying a lot more in interest and unable to keep up with those principal payments. They're in persistent debt. Um, the strong labor market helps, but it is something we are very closely watching to see if things turn. And obviously, how people are faring on credit cards and what they're spending on reveals so much about where the economy is.